Sam Ram Shanti, peace to you, peace to me. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Peter and today I'd like to talk about how to love in a healthy way. How to love in a healthy way. So this is inspired by a quote from Khalil, Khalil Gibran. Khalil Gibran and I'll read it rather than paraphrase it. <laughs> Working with love, it is to weave the cloth with threads drawn from your heart even as if your beloved were to wear that cloth. So your beloved is wearing that cloth. It's really loving somebody as you love yourself. So if you do not love yourself, you cannot love in a healthy way. We've got this preconception of love, of this bubbly chemi chemical feeling that lasts for a very short amount of time when opposites are attracting. So do you feel that's love or is that a chemical reaction? Love is very, very much deeper than that and it's, there's lots of preconceptions about love. Is, is how do you love? How do you love somebody? How do you, how do you make their life better? Do you do it by spoiling them? No, I've seen many, many different ways of spoiling and there's lots of children now who haven't wanted for anything. They call them the millennials. They don't want for anything and they're very spoiled and don't want to do anything now. So it's, it's a very difficult situation to get them to move. I remember spending time which, uh, with my nephews and it was interesting because I said to them, look at that, look at that piece of equipment there, it was a DVD player. So what would you do if that went wrong and you wanted to watch a video or DVD, I should say? You know, well, I don't know. I said, would you, would you know how to fix that? I don't know, well, I wouldn't either. So we would be rendered helpless in, the, in, that, in that situation. Made them think, made them think. And both of them went off on to do structural things where they can build things now, mechanics, and learning the mechanic, mechanical think, ways that things work. So they're gonna be flourishing in that industry which is growing now with machines to like robots and things like that is it, it, going to start to flourish. That whole industry is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm not saying that it was me who pushed them in that direction, but it's getting people to think that's love. And to think about themselves and how they can improve themselves. That is love. That is loving somebody. That is looking at somebody else's life and saying, how can I help to improve their life? Not giving them stuff, giving them affection's good, not looking that or attention is is obviously excellent but sharing something that you can see in, that's in their lives that is missing and helping them move towards it helping them slowly move towards that we, we did that with our cat we had a cat the cat was abandoned by the people next door and we we got another little cat called jimmy <laughs> jimmy hendrix he's a terror and he didn't want this cat around the neighborhood so she was living out front and we live on a, a very busy road out the front and she, they, they'd abandoned her, they'd taken her out, they'd given her to somebody else to look after, she, she was nearly starved to death, she came back and they were put out, she was living out the front because Jimmy, wouldn't, uh, our other cat, wasn't allowing her to go even into her own garden, it was such a terror to her. So this thing was, was literally fading away in the front and we eventually enticed her to come over to our side but we didn't want to feed her all the time because she would become dependent on that food and that's not being harsh that's coming from a place of love understanding that if you feed this cat and then you stop feeding this cat that's cruel that's cool because this, this cat wouldn't be able to find or fend for itself so eventually we slowly brought the cat in and then we could feed it and then we said to the, the neighbor next door we're taking this cat on because it had nothing left on its sides nothing you know, it had no fur it was all skin and, and scabby and it was just literally just holding its head up just holding its head up with the, with the tiny amount of strength that it had and it was it was so cool to see and that was love bringing that cat in even though we had a pristine healing room to allow the cat to live in there because Jimmy wouldn't allow it anywhere near the house anywhere near so we, we nurtured that cat to health so we sacrifice something to give that cat more life because it was going to die. It was, there was no 
no two ways about it. That cat was going to die. So we sacrificed part of our life and the way that we lived to give it to that cat. Now that's love. That's true love. Even though it's to another animal, you're sacrificing part of yourself to give it to somebody else or, or another living species on this planet. So that is love. And then rather than modicoddling her all the time, slowly introducing her to Jimmy. And slowly introducing Jimmy to her, getting the smells on your hands, stroking them one after the other, and then trying to get into a room together. He wasn't having it. He wasn't having it at all. And now, after about two years, slowly allowing them to work it out for themselves, but gently pushing her out more into the rooms that we wanted to go into, and she would be there for a little while, then scarpa back into the healing room that we got on the side of the house and then slowly we would get her into the garden and slowly these two cats are now nose to nose not friends still because <laughs> jimmy won't have it but she's trying her best and she's using intelligent her intelligence she, she wants to to have a loving family around her she can see she's never had that and she's starting to bring her boundaries out and she's doing things that annoy both of us but we allow her to do it because we love her not because we're spoiling her, because we want her to grow. We're doing things to help her to grow. And that's what love is. So to love in a healthy way is to allow other people to grow around you and gently guide them when they're going a little bit astray without preaching or judging, just loving, loving them and sharing your knowledge with other people. Sharing your knowledge is love. It's, it's the biggest form of love is to, to give other people your guidance, but not to tell them what to do. Let people figure out this out for themselves. That's so important because we live in a society where we will be told what to do soon unless we change that. We will be given a life. Well, this is your, if you've read Brave New World, read it. If you haven't, read it. Right, this is what you do. This is, this is where you're going today. This is how you're gonna have your day. Well, you're almost there. And then you come home and then you get your entertainment and you eat, go to bed, and you get up and do the same thing. Oh, that's not a life. That's, that's being conditioned into doing something the same back and forth every day, you're becoming a cyborg, which is a lot of people are, are worried about now with, with what's going on with the medical agenda, that we're, we're being turned into cyborgs. And it is, a, it is a problem because of nanotechnology and how they're using nanotechnology and all this nonsense that they're, they're trying to merge human beings with machines when we are capable of such enormous love in our hearts we have the biggest electromagnetic frequency of, of our bodies is our heart area by far much more much bigger area than the brain or the gut even though these three are connected we call them the three dan johns in our practice so open up your heart area, give yourself really positive affirmations. I am love, I am empathy, I am compassion. Really say it to yourself and mean it, I am love, I am empathy, I am compassion. We do it in our Jigan meditations, I am love, I am empathy, I am compassion. And open up those feelings and then you'll start to learn how to live. Love in an empathetic and compassionate way rather than the Mills and Boons love that we talk about in our films and books and short stories, which really touches on the energy of love, but the energy of love is everything. And that's all it is. Everything is love. Everything else is an illusion. We come from love. We are love. And once you realize that and you start to tap into the higher energies of love, you will begin to love in a healthy way. You'll see it, you'll see it through your third eye, your pineal gland chakra, where you're not judging, where you're not looking at other people and saying, well, look at them. Oh, they're so much worse or so much better than me. Judgmental minds. <laughs> no, you won't, you'll be loving, you'll be, you're in a more open state so tapping your heart chakra is a very good way of opening up and loving in a more healthy way. Doing it physically through the body is incredible. It's a very powerful thing. 
I didn't realise that until I started doing it myself because when someone said that, I thought, no. Yorkshire Lee's brought a very, very good system into the West called Body and Brain, or you can do it through my channel. I'm a Body and Brain instructor, I actually turned that into Qigong. Because really, everything they teach is Qigong. And there's many things on this channel to help you actually start to open your heart up. Got any questions? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Open up your heart. So, hang on with that.